Hello, welcome to Living Life. It's a pleasure uh, having you guys as we share God's Word together. I think one of the great ironies of the Gospel is that people who we, who we think are going to be receptive of the Gospel don't receive it well, and people who we least expect to accept the Gospel, they accept it with very open hearts. And to give an idea of, uh, of what this means is, I think one of the hardest places to evangelize is probably the main cities. Uh, if, if I were to evangelize in the heart of New York City or in the heart of Seoul where I live, let's say Gangnam Station, a lot of people will not be receptive of the gospel. Uh, if I were to go to the financial district in Manhattan and share the gospel with uh, a lot of the finance guys, uh, I will probably be ridiculed, I will probably be provoked, a lot of them will call me uh, uh, silly and stupid for, for preaching God's word at that time, at the hour, and they'll be like, why don't, you some, why don't you do something better with your time? And same thing probably so too. But if I were to carry the same gospel and message, and if I were to preach it to, let's say, someone living in a remote island, or let's say someone living in a third world country, or someone who's never heard the gospel before, and although I may be attacked, but a lot of them will be surprisingly very open-minded and very receptive of the gospel. And I think this is what uh, the Bible is, is talking about when it says that God will use the foolish things of the world to trump uh, the wise and that God will use the humble people to trump the, uh, the arrogant people and that God will use the weak uh, people to overcome the strong people. And I think this is a great irony of the gospel. Uh, as we get into today's word, uh, there is a certain irony where God, He prepared this word and that God, uh, where God prepares salvation for the chosen people, the Israelites, but they reject the gospel. And when God opens the gospel to the Gentiles, they overwhelmingly, they open it, uh, they receive it with open hearts. Uh, so let's see what God's promises for those uh, who are faithful to His word and for those who reject His word. Let's get into today's word. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 16. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here am I, here am I. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations a people who continually provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of unclean meat, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your fathers, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defiled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes, and men say, Don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it, so will I do in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, and the valley of Achor a resting place for herds, for my people who seek me. But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and you will all bend down for the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. 
My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name to my chosen ones as a curse. The sovereign Lord will put you to death, but to his servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. For the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. I want us to examine verses 1 and 2. I think they carry very important things that we need to know about this text. I reveal myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, here am I, here am I. Because the Israelites rejected God, uh, Israelites who are the first chosen people, because they rejected him, God was saying, listen, I'm going to bring the gospel, I'm going to bring my grace, and I'm going to give it to the Gentiles. And they're the ones who are going to accept God. Verse 2 says, all day long, I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. One of the things that really grieved God's spirit was when people were rebellious before God. And what it means to be rebellious is not uh, spiritually tuning ourselves uh, to God's ways and thoughts, but it's going our separate ways, going wherever we wanted, going wherever our evil hearts led us to. That's what it uh, meant to go their own separate ways and says, pursuing their own imaginations. They did whatever they please. And if we continue reading verses 4 through 5, it says, uh, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of impure meat. They had no desire to keep the laws that God had given them through Moses. And they sought after uh, sorcerers. They sought after fortune tellers. And even though God was the one who, uh, who held the future in his hands, they wanted comfort from these uh, magicians and these uh, fortune tellers. And one of the things that really uh, made God uh, angry was the fact that Israelites, they worshiped gods made from the hands of men. Uh, and uh, he mentions early in the text where, where uh, the Israelites will get a piece of wood, they'll cut it in half, and with one half, they'll make an idol made from the hands of men. And with the other half, what they'll do is they'll bring that wood, they'll chop it up, and they'll use it to cook their dinner later on. And in the eyes of God, this was pure folly. And he was asking the Israelites, why do you worship uh, these idols made from your hands? And why do you use that same wood later to cook your food? I am the Alpha and Omega. I created the heavens and the earth, and I have chosen you as my people. I have called you by your name. I have known you before you were created in your mom's uh, mother's womb. I know the exact hair count that you have. Come to me. Come back to me. And is calling upon his people because even though we're faithless, God is faithful. And this is some of, um, uh, this is what God says that if you do not keep uh, my uh, law and if you do not keep my words, and this is what's going to happen. It says, See it, uh, see it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay back into their laps both your sins and the sins of your ancestors, says the Lord, because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defy me on the hills. I will measure into their laps the full payment of their former deeds. This is the justice of God. And continues, uh, verse 10, Sharon will become a pasture for flocks and the valley of Akure, a resting place for herds, for my people who seek me. So for those who seek and wait upon God's promises, there will be peace. There will be comfort. But for those that uh, do not, verse 11 and 12, it says, But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will fall into slaughter, slaughter. For I called you, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. 
Verse 13, Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. There's a clear promise uh, for those who are faithful unto God's promises. He says that you will eat, that you will not go hungry, that you will drink, and you will rejoice. But for those who reject God's word, for those who reject God's covenant, you go hungry, you go thirsty, and you'll be put to shame. Uh, verse 14, My servants will sing out of joy of their hearts, but you'll cry out from my anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. This is God's promise uh, to its people. Uh, even though the Israelites rejected the gospel and God's uh, word as His chosen people, God will extend His promise and will extend His covenant to the Gentiles uh, surrounding Israel, uh, the Israelites. And as long as whoever it may be, Israelites or Gentiles, whoever receive God's word, whoever waits upon God's promises, they will receive His everlasting covenant and His promises. Let's go into time of prayer. Today's word uh, was a reminder for us to really examine our hearts. Again, the irony of the gospel is that people who we think are going to receive it, they don't receive it. And people who we think that won't receive it end up receiving it. And that's what happened to the Israelites. The firstborn, the, the, the chosen people of God rejected His word because they went their separate rebellious ways. And God extended His promise to the Gentiles and they received His word. So I think it's a reminder for us that God's uh, everlasting covenant, that His promise of uh, promises to, um, to fill us with food, to fill us with the Spirit, to give us everlasting water, to make us rejoice. We could have all that as long as we remain faithful to God's Word. So I pray that we could just really um, open our hearts today to receive God's Word because God doesn't want... Um, worship on the outside. We could go to church all we want, but if we don't worship in spirit and in truth, it serves no purpose. You could go to church for 20 years and sit in the same row, sit in the same seat, but if you're not worshiping with your heart, I don't think that's what God wants. God wants true worship. Uh, he wants uh, everything that's inside, which is our heart. So I pray that at this time that we could give our hearts to God and worship Him in spirit and truth. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the word you have given us today. Uh, we learned that uh, the Israelites, because they rebelled against you, because they did whatever pleased their hearts and not your heart, you ultimately uh, brought the gospel and extended to the Gentiles. We learned, today's, uh, we learned through today's word that your everlasting promises and your covenant, it goes to the people who wait upon you, for those who seek you. So I pray that we may earnestly seek you with all of our hearts. I pray that we may not be uh, Christians who are Christians on the outside, but I pray that in the inside that we may really uh, carry the scent of Christ, that, that we may be spirit-filled and that we may really uh, hold on to your promises. I pray that you just bless us today, that your words may really take um, root into our hearts and that we may bear beautiful fruit. We thank you, we love you, and in your precious name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the generous donations of listeners.